Hello, and uh, welcome to the Customer Experience Webinar by BPM Online in Amberleaf. I am Andy Brill with BPM Online, and I'm joined today by Andy Sutherland. Our presenters will be Andy Sutherland of BPM Online and John Cariotis of Amberleaf Partners. Um, we're excited to, to join you today uh, with this webinar. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available to you in, within a few days. And also would like to request that if you have any questions, please enter them into the GoToWebinar panel. Um, or you could ask them at, towards the end of the presentation. We'll be taking Q&A at that time as well. Um, so uh, without any further ado, why don't we get started with today's webinar? First, what I'd like to do is just cover the meeting agenda. Today, what we're going to be covering will be defining customer experience for you. So we're all starting on a level playing field and have a good understanding of what we're referring to when we're talking about customer experience. We'll talk about the different challenges related to omni-channel. Um, we'll be discussing a case study for customer experience, and then we'll uh, have a Q&A session towards the, the end of the presentation. Uh, so we're excited to have you join us for today's customer experience webinar. And what I'm going to do is now turn it over to Andy Sutherland of BPM Online. Hi, everybody. Um, glad to be here. So Andy Sutherland here, I'm an Enterprise Solutions Manager at BPM Online. And so I was going to start off uh, a little bit just giving some more background on BPM Online uh, before we bring John into our conversation. As many of you may already know, you know, BPM Online has been around for 10 plus years. We've got uh, offices in Boston, Kiev, London, Melbourne, uh, obviously global organization with offices around the world. Uh, trying to make a lot more inroads these days into um, the North American markets, hence part of the, uh, the conversation today. We have a large customer base of over 7,000 customers today. Um, here's just an example of a few that are out there. And we continue to have growing analyst recognition in a number of quadrants related to sales, marketing, service, and business process management. So part of our vision uh, is that overall, you know, the world is accelerating at a rapid pace. Uh, from now until 2020, the information, the amount of information out there about on the, uh, the internet and, and everywhere in organizations is expected to double every two years, pedestrians are actually walking faster now than just a decade ago. And in the time it took the airlines to reach nearly 50 million users, it only took 19 days for Pokemon Go to reach the same. So in the days now of uh, digital transformation and as some of your more traditional business processes are making the move into digital, it becomes increasingly important to be agile and nimble in those processes in being able to do it in order to stay on top of your particular vertical of expertise and above the competition. So that, you know, similar to say the taxi industry and Uber, you know, there's not new business models coming in and starting to take over as a significant player in that market. Now, as part of that, there's customer experience and that's what we're here to talk about more today. And really, you know, so what defines part of the optimal customer experience? So the journey to the next level is often defined in the industry as moving customers from a multi-channel to an omni-channel approach. And so what exactly does that mean? In the case of multi-channel, that's your ability to support interactions with your prospects and customers across multiple communication channels. So things like using social media, maybe Facebook, or having brick and mortar retail store, or something like an Amazon marketplace, right? These are means to have multiple routes to market to try to impact your customer base. The challenge 
today in a lot of those is that that information and that information flow doesn't often relate to one another or you don't have the ability to seamlessly move from one channel to the next. So while it's multi-channel and you can have those multiple routes to market, someone on Facebook may have that's supporting that conversation may have no idea what's happened on the retail or on the online side of things. But as you move towards omni-channel, this is where you know another common phrase gets used a lot, which is the, the 360 degree customer view, right? This is kind of where the the optimal customer experience and omni-channel comes into play, where a chat session may have started with one of your customers who then put their purchase or their interaction on hold to go somewhere else, and then perhaps the next time it's a phone call into our service organization or the sales department. So in Omnichannel, it's important to relate all of these customer interactions and make them easily visible to all the agents that you have supporting those multiple channels so that they can take the time to continue a pre-existing conversation and not have to spend time reevaluating and re-engaging with the customer just to get back to square one. So obviously, uh, the ability to support omnichannel communications and the true 360 degree view is where BPM Online and a lot of other folks in the industry think it's going to be important to uh, bring businesses to and to be able and able to support in order to maximize your routes to market your revenue stream, and have positive customer experience. So in this line uh, of conversation, what I want to do is not only talk a little bit about how we think BPM Online fits into the customer experience and the journey towards, say, omni-channel communication, but we also wanted to have a conversation with John Cariotis and bring in some of his expertise from Amberleaf Partners' point of view. So with that, I'd like to ask John to introduce himself and Amberleaf real quick. Thanks, Andy. I appreciate that uh, and glad to be here today. Um, <clears throat> again, my name is John Curiotis, um, and I run our customer experience practice uh, here at Amberleaf. Amberleaf is a, uh, is a consulting organization, and we focus on uh, two primary disciplines, one around uh, the customer experience and, and customer relationship management, and that is in the way organizations uh, market, uh, the way that they sell, uh, and the way that they service their customers. Um, uh, the other component of our business that we focus on is around uh, data governance uh, and, and analytics. And, and what that means is we work significantly uh, with our clients to be able to aggregate data from across their enterprise, help manage the quality and hygiene of that data from a data quality and uh, mastery to management perspective, and then help gain the insights into the ways that they're able to gain um, uh, the uh, the intelligence based off of the information uh, that we learn from the way that the customers market, sell, and service as well. So um, glad to be here today and, and, and share some of the, 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 the insights that we're seeing in terms of the clients that we work with. Uh, we've been uh, uh, started our firm back in 2004, uh, and, and since that time, um, working with organizations, we have deployed over 1,100 um, CRM uh, and data management uh, initiatives uh, for our clients and uh, have a, uh, uh, seen quite a bit of um, challenges, uh, problems to solve, as well as um, solutions that uh, many organizations are benefiting from these days. Andy. Great. Thanks for the intro, John. Um, maybe you could share a little bit uh, of your experiences in helping your customers through the omnichannel journey. Sure. Uh, so one of the things that our, um, our, our we're seeing is our clients needing to be able to bring uh, all aspects of, of not only the, the buying process, um, uh, uh, the marketing process, the selling process, the service process together. Um, across each of the ways that uh, that or, that client will navigate their journey uh, with um, with that set organization. One of the challenges that we're facing uh, that the clients face is, is 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 they've gone out and they've they've identified ways that they can uh, solve problems with pieces of technology. Uh, um, and to so much of the uh, multi-channel discussion examples that you gave, uh, Andy. 
um, what we see is, is that clients will sort of check the box. I've got a marketing application, or I can support a customer in the way that they uh, can chat with me, or I can take a phone call, or I can send an email. Um, I may have a knowledge base, or I, I've got a sales process I can go through and, and manage the steps of a sales cycle. All of those are good fundamental components that we're seeing uh, that many organizations have, have, have accum uh, accumulated over time, whether that's with the AN application or different pieces of applications that they, that they go achieve that. Um, the challenges that uh, we're finding customers now uh, facing is, is what do we do? with this information? What do we learn from it? Um, and are we really achieving the objectives that, uh, that we, we set out to do? And what we've noticed is that many clients that have set the uh, objectives as an organization, what the goals uh, of the, a company may be, uh, and the outcomes that they're looking to achieve around managing a customer experience are often misaligned. Um, and they're missing line for several different reasons. Um, number one, uh, they're not identifying those outcomes and how that they are actually contributing to the goal and objective of the organization. They're driving that, that customer's experience. Um, they're challenged in the way that uh, they measure the results of achieving a different outcome. Uh, they may look at uh, metrics or KPIs, for example, on, on uh, how many clicks do I get on a marketing campaign. Uh, or I want to know, is the marketing campaign generating a certain amount of revenue? Which is all great stuff, but is it really driving uh, the, uh, the goal or the expe expectation of a positive customer experience that uh, we're looking for? Are they achieving that overall NPS as a result of that? The disconnect between one action within an organization is it may have an adverse effect on another outcome that, uh, that they're often recognizing there. Um, another challenge that our, 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 we're, we're seeing a lot of organizations face is, is, is really taking in, they're taking the inward focus or continue to take the inward focus around um, the, the setting up or implementing the capabilities around customer experience and CRM solutions. And so uh, how do I drive additional processes in my organization to be more efficient, drive costs out of my business and not necessarily into my business? And, and what they're often missing is the, the, the impact that those decisions have on the customer and determine the strategy and the policies that, that, that we're trying to yield for that specific customer. They, they, they are, the intention is often um, uh, uh, correct in, in saying, I'm trying to provide a better customer experience by giving them a channel of choice to communicate, to buy with me through an online commerce store or, or communicate to me through a website self portal to provide more information online to self-serve for the things they want to do. Those intentions are all great, but they're often met by misaligned expectations or actions to, to, to satisfy those intentions on the way that we navigate that customer experience. And, and oftentimes that's the case because we're thinking about the customer's point of view or our point of view and the impact it's going to have on our business and the policies and procedures and not necessarily the impact that it's going to have on that overall customer's expectation of us. Um, Another area that we're finding challenges that our clients um, are struggling with is the way they actually go about implementing the pieces of technology. Um, there are a plethora of different components, features, functions, and software solutions out there today. And, uh, and oftentimes our clients are getting drowned in it. Um, what is the best solution for them? Depending on the size of an organization, they're making choices uh, in different departments or within a department about what um, using different marketing applications versus sales or service applications. Um, the way that those applications are implemented are differently or more self-serving uh, to the specific needs of a small user base as opposed to the aggregate understanding of the way that customer's experience needs to be navigated itself. So when we look into man as a solution, um, for our clients, uh, we're recognizing the design of that technology, and more importantly, the data to support that desired outcome is often misaligned as well. Um, and then finally, one of the other challenges that we're really seeing is is understanding how the outcomes that they're they're looking to achieve are being are analyzed and being monitored. Uh, more importantly, what we're seeing is is that clients are getting the reports, they're getting the fancy dashboards, pretty graphs, and all that good stuff around it, but what are they doing with the information? How is that information feeding back into driving the actions uh, to satisfy those intentions of, of, of a positive customer experience? And so the alignment then becomes 
the flow of what's what it, what what's in it for me in terms of my business, what's in it for my customer, in terms of my my objectives. Uh, how am I going to tie that all together with the piece of technology, and how am I learning from my behaviors uh, to be able to shape the way what customers are expecting of us, and then what we're doing in response to those customer expectations themselves. Interesting. Th thanks for that. That's uh, some good challenge examples. Um, you, I'd actually like to take a minute here uh, to throw a poll out to the audience uh, just with a couple of potential challenges that we thought might be out there. And I'd be curious to see uh, if any of these are kind of applying or, or are being applied within your organization, if any of the challenges you can relate to, and maybe it's something that we can try and talk to a little bit. So I'll give you a minute just to fill that out. All right, it looks like... Uh, at the moment, alignment is a bit of a challenge. And I can imagine with trying to get a number of different channels working with one another and through different apps and everything else. So, all right. We're just about to wrap up here. We got about 80% of the vote. All right. Well, I appreciate that feedback, everybody. It looks like one of the biggest items that, that, and challenges that you seem to be seeing, at least out of the ones that we've provided, are uh, some of the operational alignment um, due to disconnected apps and uh, disconnected data and, and multiple channels. So to that end, um, what I'd like to ask is, is, John, maybe if you could help to provide us with an example of a scenario that you've helped somebody move through that multi-channel to omni-channel experience. Maybe you could give us a more specific case. Well, a couple of different ways that we go about that. It's interesting that alignment uh, to te technology applications is one of the uh, uh, the primary uh, problems that uh, the audience has seen today. I think that uh, that probably bodes well with uh, what we're seeing in the marketplace as well. Um, you know, again, the alignment um, in the application is. Um, uh, uh, it tends to really stem from the, the, the strategies that organizations tend to go out. So the operational alignments are really driven from what are my operational strategies to support those customer experience uh, uh, when that is not necessarily um, uh, uh, properly executed. You get different pieces of technology to be able to drive what that's out. And so one of the one of the ways that we go about accomplishing that in 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 in, in, a, in, a, in an example here would be really to 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 look at the way that we're going to plan how what are the changes we're looking to make to our business and what are the changes our clients are looking to make to the uh, 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 the impact that it's going to have on um, their organizational and operational efficiencies and what that impact is and the outcome it's going to achieve for that. Uh, uh, that particular customer's experience. And so um, what we try to do is work with our clients to be able to say, let's let's define a program approach that 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 can draw distinct linear uh, um, uh, uh, linkages between corporate strategy to program objective to uh, uh, operational effectiveness to then the impact it's going to have on both on the organization as well as on the customer. So um, oftentimes we're finding clients just jump right into you know requirements feature function, integration, uh, which is all great. Um, and what we find today with, with cloud-based technologies and CRM capabilities and, and, and simplification of a lot of these tools that uh, are available in the marketplace today is that we're just getting to the same bad place faster. So we encourage our clients to be able to stop, pause, and be able to align uh, our program and, uh, objectives to the changes it's going to have on the behaviors, both operationally as well as uh, as well as to the customer itself. Um, what we end up doing then is look to be able to break down increments. Um, it's common today that organizations would take either uh, one a, a waterfall methodology of trying to be able to deploy a piece of uh, a software an integration, a new piece of technology, what have you. Or they may take an agile approach. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, companies will look at uh, the agility of getting uh, something off and running in a custom development scenario. We're kind of looking at that and we're bringing the two and bringing the hybrid of them together. And why that's important is we want to be able to, like, we don't have to have all the answers right. We want to be directionally correct. Just because we could configure something doesn't necessarily mean we should do something within a, you know, a call-based CRM technology. Um, but what we're looking to do then is break down the incremental components then 
of the key capabilities that are driving the changes we're looking to do in the business and by staggering them up. In this, great, in this example here, what we're looking at is how do we manage the case or the way that we're actually going to build the processes to establish the foundation to enable how our uh, positive customer experience in that way. And those are the way we're managing our customer uh, accounts. If, if we're a business organization or a consumer direct organization, how we're managing those contests itself. And what are those fundamental foundational components to do it, to enable those, uh, those customer experiences itself. Well, once we understand who the customer is and how that customer needs to be, um, in, uh, how we need to interact with that customer against their specific expectations, we kind of then move into the way that we need to be able to serve or sell to them, right? So what information do we need to provide to them to properly get them the right quoting, the right uh, process of uh, managing uh, how they want to buy from us and how we want to sell to them? And what information, more importantly, is needed to be able to support that from a back office? One of the key challenges that we're often seeing today in the data component of the infrastructure is that key rich information from our back office, whether that's an ERP application, a financial transaction, uh, a processing application, or accounting uh, piece of software, HR piece of software, is rich details about customer information about who we'll be able to then support those customers are, are sitting in those applications. We want to bring that back office forward as well to be able to support that sales and support process in that way. Um, but now we've got to look at ourselves too and saying, okay, great, I've done a good job of understanding who my customer is. I've done a good job then of understanding how to be able to sell uh, and serve that particular customer. Well, what does that mean to me as an employee, right? What am, how am I going to get paid on that? Uh, and how is it going to be able to change my behavior from a commission perspective of what I'm gaining? And what are the complications then of the integrations that I would start peeling back and forth um, in, in how to be able to drive then back office information into the front office and vice versa. What am I learning from that front office interactions and then driving back into my back office uh, at say ERP application or financial transactions. Uh, so what do we need to know about that? Um, then I'm going to re then what we try to do with our clients is once defining those enablement and learn <coughs> learn from that from an intelligence perspective, how are we going to refine that in the way that we engage with them through our leads, how we gain new business from them, how we market to them, and then manage that overall sales process itself. We want to learn from that. So what we're doing then is driving them to be able to then uh, piecemeal out, pilot different groups of um, users in order to be able to assure what our decisions were that we made in the course of this process can then be refined so we can refine and then learn from our deployments as well. And these initiatives that organizations often face don't necessarily need to take months on end. Um, this can take an incremental set of weeks in order to be able to get new capabilities out into the into the user base and as well as into the um, uh, 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 the hands of our customers um, and their customers and that they're serving in, in a matter of weeks on end, not necessarily months to years, which they're oftentimes clients are afraid of uh, of runaway kind of projects themselves. So. Those are really good ways and steps that we're focusing on and noticing uh, from our clients in the way they handle that. Interesting. Um, so, I think in the regards to the interactions between Amberleaf and, and BPM Online, you know, how do you feel that BPM Online and our product today is helping you to alleviate some of these customer challenges in moving toward that omni-channel model? So. One of the one of the great things that 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 we uh, have found with with BPM Online is specifically around CRM is is that many organizations um, uh, are have approached historically or have over time um, uh, adding different features and functions by selecting. Uh, uh, what they believe to be best of breed applications. I've got a different marketing campaign tool, sales processing tool, customer support capability, analytics uh, application on top of that so I can understand what I'm doing. Uh, more importantly then, uh, the way that they're actually trying to facilitate these processes interdepartmental and across departmental as well. Uh, what we find, uh, what we're finding with our clients um, within BPM Online is um, rather than breaking apart you know, those different functions and, and separate different applications that we're having to complicate the uh, deployment process as well as to complicate the maintenance of that and aggregating the data across different several different applications, BPM Online is providing that common foundational platform all in one. 
uh, where we can then solve our clients' problems with a common framework uh, of a single data set, the way those pro business processes need to be then um, developed across department and interdepartmental in the way that a, the same sales functionality, the same application with the service functionality, the same application with the marketing capabilities, all within a common data platform. And so when we're dealing with that, our clients, we can go to a single source, truly get that single source of truth, and then execute on that single uh, source of truth through their customer expectation uh, with the same business processes, with the same set of data, uh, within the same set of configuration capabilities deployed across an organization. So that common platform that once was the case years ago, that organizations tend to have been clouded by, if you will, by having multiple different applications, even though they were uh, SaaS-based, cloud-based applications that were providing marketing sales and service capabilities, that ended up complicating the matters more so than, than, than simplifying them. Um, BPM Online has really brought that all together again into a common consolidated platform uh, with that marketing sales and service capability, but adding that really business process framework that uh, our clients are really able to generate those efficient processes. Excellent. Well, I appreciate that insight, uh, and I think that'll dovetail a little bit right into something that I was going to talk about later, <laughs> about where we think some of our strengths are as well. So I'm glad to see that we're in alignment there. Um, so thank you for that intro. Uh, I'm just going to go through a little bit um, of our belief, the approach, and how I think this maps to John and Amberleaf's approach, uh, and why overall we think it's a good uh, synergy and a good synergistic fit for, for folks. And then uh, I see that there, it looks like there are some questions coming through, so we'll take a look and try and address those at the end. But uh, as far as BPM Online goes, right, our belief overall in engaging with customers is that technology implementations should be fast. It should take days, not months or years. You really need to uh, be able to rapidly get usage and adoption of your product as you're implementing it as part of your CRM and customer engagement methodology right away. To that point, rapid user adoption is also critical to success, right? Just because you roll it out and you think everybody's going to use it, if it's not providing valuable insights into the day, their day-to-day -day interact, interactions, then you know, the chances of them really taking to the tool and using it and getting full value out of it are reduced. Right. Um, for ongoing transformation, you need to be able to quickly access data and transfer that amongst all the various groups of your organization. So I need to quickly be able to share some of my marketing data, uh, lead generation techniques, lead generation um, information in terms of what channel it's come through, and be able to provide that information both to my sales and service organization to be able to make a really seamless customer journey from that prospect onto an onboarded and servicing customer. And then ultimately, if you can enable these capabilities, then um, change becomes the new normal and your business will be able to adapt and rapidly adjust to the refinement and optimization of your internal sales processes uh, very quickly and easily. So as John mentioned, uh, you know, we have what we feel is a rather unique platform where we have our marketing, sales, and service built on top of our intelligent, low-code business process management platform. And this is what really differentiates us and helps us to make sure that we can easily share data across groups of the organization. And then as well, because we've got this business process management platform at the core, we can help accelerate further adoption and implementation times by um, making business apps and particular verticalized business process templates available through our marketplace. And because all of those, again, rest on top of that same platform, we can easily associate uh, and, and provide data across those various processes and, and areas of the organization. So, with that, let's take a quick minute um, to take a look at some of the questions, and we'll see if we can. Yeah, and Andy, I see uh, one of the questions that came in, and this is a question uh, for John Cariotis. Um, 
There was a question, John, about uh, what are some of the key things to enhance omni-channel uh, customer experiences from your, exp uh, from your perspective? Uh, good question. I think one of the key things that um, we we encourage in clients to be able to uh, to do to enhance is uh, is to first take a step back and learn. Um, um, when we're looking at uh, you know the omni-channel ex experiences, what uh, where are we where are clients recognizing from an analysis data analysis perspective? Um, their customers being able to engage with them in the uh, uh, in the right channels themselves, and so um, so a great example, um, you know, is it, it, we work with a lot of B two B organizations that want to be able to provide online commerce. While their their own experiences is providing online commerce in their buying habits through Amazon or through. Uh, you know, through, through their retail experiences, other retail experiences that they go through. Well, why can't I expect that same uh, uh, experience through the way that I buy my products and services for the companies that I work with as well? Uh, so what we're noticing then is saying, well, our clients that are uh, are trying to drive then, our B2B clients, how to be able to um, satisfy that own omnichannel experience across their business organizations as well. Buying online through different devices as I move through that process or through that journey, uh, through the face-to-face -face interaction I might be having with that corporate sales rep that I'm dealing with. Uh, I may start with that face-to-face -face conversation with the corporate sales rep. I may then look to be able to continue parts ordering or, 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 or manufacturing processes that I might want to do through my online experiences and get those updates through my own mobile applications that I'm dealing with as well synonymous to the same example I may do online to going through my retail experiences and so um, those those are some of the those are some of the lessons that we're, we're learning that clients will be able to drive how other industries or experiences they're providing in their personal lives are, are driving their business experiences as well okay thank you very much John um, there was another question that came in this one's for Andy Sutherland and it's it's related to how the competition uh, does not deliver on some of these components versus BPM online. So uh, I think overall on that, I mean, clearly if you're a CM, CRM solution, uh, you ought to have pretty good capabilities for sales, marketing, and, and service. The challenge becomes in some of these competitive platforms out there, they were not all homegrown or home developed. And so there is some specific development effort that's required in order to make sure that I'm taking that data out of one platform and moving it into another section. So it's kind of similar to that best of breed approach where now I've got, even though it might be from the same, the same vendor, right? It's really still completely separate application modules that require more effort to make changes to a business process that spans across multiple pieces of the organization. Whereas with BPM Online, because it's all on that same core base platform, um, it's really nothing more than an analyst level decision to make an association between a piece of data that's primarily being used in marketing and then associate that with sales. And so that's why you know, we think that it's easier to make business process changes spanning multiple areas of the organization using BPM Online. Uh, because through that low code engine, and the fact that it's all on that same platform, we don't have to worry about back-end developer modifications or integration. It can be done at that analyst level. And uh, there's a follow-up question that's uh, related to the prior question. This one, again, for you, Andy, is um, discuss the, the, I guess, the value of having a single platform versus a component approach, or, or I guess you could even say best-of-breed approach. Yeah, and it's, I think very similarly. It's you know our philosophy and our thought is that by having all these uh, the capabilities and the core on that same platform, it just makes it easy to quickly integrate and, and take data from any area of the organization and make it available to others, so that I can see that complete history of say customer interaction. So that while you know one of my sales reps is talking to a prospect, uh, we can see that while they're a prospect on one particular product area, maybe they've purchased another product from us. I can see if that's under contract. 
if they've logged any uh, you know, service cases against that so that I can try to make myself better educated on how to approach this customer or this prospect to, to try and optimize my outcome. Thank you, Andy. Another question came in, and this one, uh, John, I, I, I'd like to ask this one of you. Um, there is agreement, certainly, that deployment or implementation should should take, you know, day, days or, or weeks instead of months and years. But how do you handle uh, those expectations around integrations, which uh, obviously can can add time to an implementation? Well, more and more uh, companies, software companies and middleware companies um, uh, are are collaborating that uh, you know on the box, if you will, and, I, and I, 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 services are provided between uh, you know one application A and application B, and what that means is that. Um, uh, the, the the concept of an Apple plug and play, download an app and it works, uh, you know, scenario has been um, transferred into the way that a lot of organizations now are providing, you know, pre-configured um, integrations between, you know, commonly used types of applications. And so, um, and that doesn't necessarily get us all the way there. Um, every application has unique, uh, uh, you know, configurations into it that uh, there, but the framework of, um, Middleware components are are ways that we're accelerating and able to accelerate um, integrations between one product uh, versus another product as well. So, um, and that, that that is for a lot of the commonly used products that are available, uh, hundreds of products in the available in the marketplace today. From a custom development perspective, just the use of um, the middleware products that we're seeing from an integration perspective, then that integrate nicely with. Uh, um, you know, with a lot of the uh, back office and front office applications that we're seeing. So um, what, what those products are allowing us to do today is take data source A, data source B, and it's automatically recommending data mapping. It's automatically then recommending uh, uh, helping generate code in and of itself in order to be able to make those make those integrations work. So um, where in the old days we used to have to write a specific set of code, more and more is getting empowered into advanced business users or or even when code is needed, um, it's accelerating that process uh, for those integrations um, by automatically recognizing that for us and then be able to ex um, implement those in a much more fat, rapid time frame. Thank you very much, John. John, there's another question. This one's for you as well. Um, uh, asking for guidance around the best unique identifier to tie contacts uh, across different contact methods. For example, um, do you, whether it be an account number or a customer ID or maybe some other unique identifier, do you have any um, thoughts or ideas on on uh, you know those the the best way to tie those contacts together across different contact methods. Sure, no, it's a good, it's a very good question uh, uh, um, as well. Uh, in, in, in there's 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 a, a a right way and there are a ways to go about that. Uh, uh, right way of going about that when you're dealing with multiple different sources is to um, establish a, a customer data master, right? And oftentimes organizations uh, will will navigate even with the proper uh, integration or enterprise service bus. They'll oftentimes um, uh, try to be able to build those point-to-point -point, um, integrations between several different applications, which is complicated when you're just trying multiple different data sources, uh, having multiple different IDs around it. Uh, the right way of going about that is to establishing a customer data master that we can then um, broker the the linkages between um, all the right customer information across the uh, uh, different applications that we're dealing with. So we'd insert then you know that CDM or customer data master um, within a, uh, an organizational enterprise that helps broker then um, what customers are within what particular um, applications that you'd have. And what that allows us to be able to do is take account ID here, uh, account contact ID over, and uh, you know application B, um, you know uh, uh, organization ID and application C, all called different things. Uh, append that into a customer data master, giving us that unique identifier to go about that. Uh, uh, customer data management allows us to be able to do that um, in a much more effective way uh, to be able to support that for our clients. That's the right way of going about it. 
organizations that look to not invest in a customer data management solution, then we're creating um, that that concept though within the integration framework that we're bringing to the customer itself. Um, and what that allows us to be able to do then is to sort of satisfy that same objective um, that we're doing it in a set of uh, 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 services that we'd end up building for that customer, and then assuring then that those um, that library of connections then uh, are being then put within each of those uh, set applications A, A, B, and C, so we can connect those four. Then. Thank you very much, John. Um, very informative, um, and appreciate your your insight uh, on uh, the questions from our webinar attendees. I think that's all that we have time for right now as far as uh, the number of questions. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today for our customer experience webinar. Um, and of course, I'd like to uh, thank our presenters, John Cariotis and Andy Sutherland, um, John Cariotis of Amberley and Andy Sutherland of BPM Online. Just a reminder that this webinar has been recorded and we will make it available to you. Uh, as soon as it is ready, so stay tuned for that. Um, and if there are any further questions that come about, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us after today's webinar. We'd love to connect with you. So thank you very much for joining today's webinar, um, and we're looking forward to, uh, to seeing you uh, or uh, connecting with you in the future during our next webinar. So stay tuned for additional announcements for upcoming webinars as well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.